Hi everyone and welcome to Designing a Toolbox for Continuous Communication with our existing technology. I want to go over some housekeeping issues before we begin our webinar today. Please know that you're muted and not on camera, so please relax and enjoy the presentation, which will last for a little over an hour today. You will notice a chat box to the right of your screen to enter your questions, and we'll have time for a Q&A session after the presentation. Lastly, please know that this program is being recorded, so you'll have an opportunity to share it with others or view it again yourself. And usually it'll take about a week or two to get posted onto our website. So let's get started. I'm Nicole Sammartino, Community Education Manager for the Les Turner ALS Foundation. Thank you for joining our ALS Learning Series with Anne Marie Doyle and Janet Bischoff Rosario. This webinar will identify solutions for communication and use of smartphones, tablets, and computers as ALS can affect your speech and ability to use these devices. This course will focus on making communication as easy as possible throughout the difficult journey using cutting edge technology and collaboration with, with each person's team, including their family, caregivers, therapists, physicians, and vendors. So before I formally introduce you to Anne Marie and Janet, I would like to tell you a little bit about the foundation. We wanna give a shout out to, um, to our industry partners for making this ALS learning series possible. At the, ALS, at the Les Turner ALS Foundation, we are leaders in comprehensive, personalized ALS care and research. We realize that people living with ALS may feel overwhelmed and unsure of what questions to ask and what to do next. We exist for that reason, to care for those affected by the disease, guide them to answers, support them and their loved ones, and provide hope through scientific research. Our support services team is comprised of knowledgeable and compassionate nurses and social workers with many years of experience guiding people and their families affected by ALS. We offer a variety of services, including, but not limited to, what you see on your slide here, including support group meetings, um, educational materials, access to medical equipment, and communication devices. At the Lois and Salia ALS Clinic at the Les Turner ALS Center, we offer access to enrollment in clinical trials and dedicated clinical trial coordinators. We are Chicagoland's first and largest multidisciplinary ALS clinic with the highest number of neurologists and dedicated pulmonologists. And we offer multidisciplinary care that brings together an experienced team of neuromuscular specialists in one clinic to provide comprehensive support for you and your family. It is my pleasure to introduce the topic for today, Designing a Toolbox for Continuous Communication with Your Existing Technology with Anne-Marie Doyle and Janet Bischoff-Rosario. Janet, excuse me, Anne-Marie Doyle is a senior speech language pathologist at Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. She works full-time in the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab's Technology Center, focusing on augmentative and alternative communication for both the adult and pediatric population. During her 12 years at Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, she has participated in the intensive aphasia program, completed certifications in Lee Silverman voice treatment, McNeil dysphagia therapy program, and Speak Out, along with advanced competencies in administration and analysis of video fluoroscopic swallow studies and fiber optic endoscopic evaluation of swallowing. She has participated in research looking at high density dysphagia, treatment in the inpatient setting, and most recently, she has worked alongside Dr. James Patton on a research project involving error augmentation in persons with dystarthria. She has also presented posters and lectured at both the American Speech Language Hearing Association and Illinois Speech Language Hearing Association. Janet Bischoff Rosario is the Allied Health Supervisor and an Occupational Therapist in the Technology Center at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. She has been providing assistive technology evaluations and training for the past 35 years to children and adults with a variety of disabilities in the area of, of augmentative communication, computer access, and electronic aids to daily living. 
She has written several chapters and articles on assistive technology, teaches live and virtual courses, and is always in the process of learning a new technology. When it is safe to travel again, Janet and her husband are looking forward to taking their Alaskan trip to, Den to Denali that they postponed, postponed earlier in 2020. So it is my pleasure to introduce Anne-Marie Doyle and Janet Bischoff-Rosario. Hi there, everyone. It's so nice to meet with you all virtually. Thank you so much for um, giving up your Thursday afternoon. We really appreciate it. I'm Anne-Marie, and let me click on over to our webinar. So um, we'll just start off this afternoon. Um, thank you, Nicole, for that lovely introduction. Janet and I both um, work at the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab, um, which you can see very nicely on the other side of the screen. Um, please, we are in downtown Chicago, not too far from um, the Les Turner and ALS um, Clinic at Northwestern. So please feel free to always stop by. We've got great views. Um, all right, so let's keep on moving here. Um, all right, so I think an agenda is always helpful to keep us on track here. Um, please note in part five, we do have time built in for question and answers. So um, feel free to enter any questions ahead of time into the chat. And then we have time at the end dedicated where we'll be able to go through those. So part one, we'll be talking about voice and message banking. Part two, some low-tech communication options. Part three, some mid-tech options, along with access to your phone and tablet. Part four, some high-tech options. And then uh, Janet will discuss more about alternative access. And then like I previously mentioned, some Q&A. So let's jump in here, guys. Let's talk about voice and message banking. And this is something that I find is um, often sometimes these terms are used synonymously. Um, so I'm going to break down, hopefully, and make this a little bit more clear for you. So voice banking is the process of creating a synthesized or computerized voice, which then could be downloaded to a communication system. And in certain cases, it can also be downloaded to um, a text-to-speech app. So we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, so think um, as voice banking as a process where you use your computer and a microphone headset, and you're gonna go through a third-party system Really popular ones are Model Talker, you may have heard of, Acapella, and then there's a newer one on the market, or at least new to me, that I've recently used called Speak Unique. Um, these third party uh, applications or companies take your recordings and then they synthesize or develop a voice based off of your profile. I would say within the last couple of years, they've gotten Obviously, the technology has advanced. Prior, you needed to bank or script about 1,500 messages. I think now acapella can do something with as little as 50 lined scripts or recordings. And Speak Unique has made a voice. I think they recommend at least five minutes of connected speech, but they've made a voice with as little as like a minute. So um, really can be tailored to whatever works best for you. Now these do cost money because we're asking a party, a, a, a different company to kind of make the voice. There is, they all charge um, a different nominal fee. It can range anywhere from about $100 to about $1,000, which I know um, is a lot of money, right? That, that's a huge, um, piece of money, especially thinking about all the other money that we're spending um, throughout the disease process. Do not let that preclude you. There are nonprofit organizations that will cover the cost for you. So I think sometimes we'll try, we'll see if this works. I do have my voice um, recorded. Let's see if this works. And I apologize if it doesn't, but
Oh, it would be helpful if my phone was on volume. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. So this is what, one second, I'll show you what the acapella um, website looks like. Oops. So here, um, after I've recorded my 50 line scripts, um, they will give you a preview of your voice. So you don't also have to commit to paying for the voice. You get to hear it first and see if you like it. So let's see now with my volume up, if you can hear my message. And my phone is loading, sorry about that. And okay, sorry, some technical difficulties here. Good afternoon, Les Turner. Thank you so much for letting me talk to you this afternoon. Good afternoon, Les Turner. Thank you so much for letting me talk to you this afternoon. So it sounds, hopefully you could hear a little bit of that audio. Um, this is where I would type in a novel message um, that I wouldn't have necessarily recorded because today is just a novel day. I don't always lecture to Les Turner. Um, so that's how your synthesized voice would sound. It's gonna sound a little bit like you, but a little digitized. So think of the voice you hear if you are familiar with like, hey Alexa or um, hey Google. The voice that responds back to you is a voice, but it's a little computerized. Okay, so now let's jump to um, message banking. So message banking is a little bit different. This is the process of recording very specific stories, phrases, sounds, like a laugh that um, if you wanna record your laugh, you can to be downloaded to your communication system. As far as I know right now, these messages um, haven't been developed to download into like a voice output app at this time, um, but they would be ready to go should you ever need um, a more dedicated or a speech generating device. These will not be digitized. They will not be computerized. They will sound exactly like you do the day you record the message. Um, this is completely free. All you need is a computer or a tablet or even a phone. Like I've message banked um, just using my iPhone. Um, if you use a computer, we would recommend like a Zoom mic, which is a very specific type of um, microphone and recorder and a quiet space. And then the other thing that you'll wanna do is um, set up a My Toby Dynavox account. So this is what it would look like um, on your screen. This is just an example of somebody's own um, message banking. So you'll see they're very personalized. There's a message that says, let's go Eagles, um, Oma, and then some more things that you would say day to day. What are we having for dinner? Or how is your day? Or good morning. And let me show you again. I'm going to toggle over to my own message banking. So this is my own Toby Dynavox account here. And you'll see I have a couple messages saved. Sorry for the glare. So I'll play one for you. And I apologize, I don't know why. <laughs> See, welcome to the tech center. Whenever you need something to work it's and you really want to impress somebody, it's bound to not work. So I apologize, but it would, so the message I was trying to play on my phone was me recording good morning. So it would sound exactly how I did the day I recorded it. All right, so let's quickly review um, voice and message banking. So it's the process of saving your voice. So um, further down the road or as your disease progresses, should you notice any changes in your voice, you've already started the preservation process and those voices or messages would be available to download into um, a dedicated device. Um, voice banking creates a computerized voice of your own. 
message banking is your own voice, but recorded very specific messages. Um, as you can tell, this is a big deal, right? Our voices are part of our personality. They're part of our identity. Um, so there's no right or wrong answer for you in this process. Some, I've had some patients who decide not to do either. I've had some patients who decide just to message bank. I've had some patients do both. That's something that you have to think of um, and decide what works best for you. Um, some common things that come up is I have some patients say, well, I don't like the sound of my voice, so why would I record it? Think about your family, have a discussion with your family. Maybe you don't like the sound of your voice right now, but they do, or there are certain messages that they really want to be able to preserve um, and have you use. Maybe there's a family member that sounds very similar. My sister and I sound very similar on the phone. Um, so whenever we call our parents, there's always a, is this Anne Marie or Mary Kate? Um, so I could always ask my sister, to complete this process on behalf of me. So there's a lot of different, um, there's no, I can't stress it enough, no right or wrong way for you to do this. And also please don't let technology or the lack of equipment or money or monetary value preclude you or kind of deter you from the process. There are nonprofits such as Team Gleason that will cover the cost of voice banking for you they will also provide you with a computer or a microphone or the equipment that you may need. All right, moving right along, let's jump into part two, low tech strategies. So I think these are just as important as our high tech or mid tech strategies. Um, as somebody who's a little type A, I can I, I, I know my strengths and weaknesses. I love having a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. So think of your low tech strategies as something that you can keep in your pocket to pull out when you need them. Um, so here are some examples. These are paper-based. They don't require batteries. They don't require charging. They can't break. Um, in this corner right here, we have an example of a communication book. These are personalized on um, the needs and vocabulary of each patient we see. Um, this example shows a book that has both words and pictures, but certainly if you don't need the picture, um, you just want the word, or um, maybe you don't want the word, you just want the picture, we can kind of make whatever works best for your life. This is something that I've had a patient keep um, in a pocket or a bag and they can pull out or maybe even the side of their bed. I had somebody keep it in the side of their bed um, and they can just point to um, the thing that they need. Okay, down here, you'll see a multi-colored AEIOU board. So this is just a letter board um, that is categorized by vowel. This can be used in a lot of different ways. So if you are noticing that you still have pretty good hand movement or finger movement, I've had patients just spell their message. So B-A-T-H-R-O-O-M um, in a conversation or um, in a conversational moment, maybe I'm getting most of the message, but I can't hear one word um, just by cueing or saying like, can you tell me the first letter or sound that the word starts with? So just getting to that B, I need to use, oh, bathroom. That was enough context for me, the conversational partner, to fill in what I didn't understand. Um, we always have on the flip side of our AEIOU board, just as a way to save time, um, some pre-stored messages down here. So you'll see a row of needs, feelings, positions. Again, you can easily use your finger to point to what you need. This could also be used hands-free using something called partner-assisted scanning, where your conversational partner would kind of walk you through, I know you're trying to tell me something, let's go row by row. Is it in the red row? No. Is it in the blue row? No. Is it in the yellow row positioning? Yes. And that yes response could be with your voice. It could be with an eye blink. It could be with your eyes up up or a head turn or a smile. Um, so really could be um, utilized across a lot of different um, processes. 
Then up here in the top corner, we have something called an ETRAN board. So this is a spell board. You'll see there's letter groupings. And then in each um, grouping, each individual letter is a different color. So right now I'm pointing to A, B, C, D, E, F. So I would bring, if I was spelling my name, I would bring my eyes up to this letter group. And then I would let um, my conversational partner know what letter I'm talking about by looking at the red box because my name is Anne Marie, A is red. So that's how I would indicate that I'm spelling something that starts with the letter A. Now, if we were coming down here for the next letter in my name, N, I'm gonna look down at this bottom quadrant here where the N is. So to let them know this is my grouping, but you'll see the N is green. So I'm gonna bring my eyes back up to that green dot or that green box to indicate N. This may seem a little cumbersome or um, a little hard to wrap your head around at first. Believe me, the more you use it, the faster it gets. It becomes kind of a second language. Similar to the pre-stored messages that I mentioned on the AEIOU board, I've also made these letter boards at a phrase level. So we have bathroom, um, reposition, section, um, bed, or recliner. So I can use um, actual phrases in each corner and then just use my eyes to indicate to what, to what I need. And then this one down here isn't paper-based, but this is called a boogie board. So this is just a writing tablet. Um, I think they register for like anywhere between $10 and $15 on Amazon. Um, it's just a high contrast writing tablet that you can write on. It's not gonna smudge or smear when you're writing. And whatever you write will stay put until you decide to hit delete. I've had patients who really like this, especially now because we have to wear masks when we go out in public. Um, I had a patient who loved to take this to the grocery store. So she could simply write out half a pound of Swiss cheese, um, one pound of smoked turkey breast, um, sliced thin, please. And she could just show that to the person behind the deli um, to let them know what she needed. Okay, so let's review our low tech strategies. Low tech strategies, great backup to your voice, can easily be utilized to repair some communication breakdowns or a misunderstanding. They're paper-based, they don't require charging or any batteries, which is great, meaning we can use them um, if you don't wanna take a device into the bathroom because you're afraid it might get wet, right? Um, if you need to communicate something in the car, well, we can't have our high-tech device up and strapped into the car while it's moving, so, um, or maybe outside, and you just need something quick and fast you wanna tell somebody. These are great, great, um, pieces of your toolbox that you can utilize across different um, settings. All right, part three. So now we're getting a little bit more high tech, right? So these are our mid tech options. They will either require batteries um, in the instance of like a voice amplifier, they may run on batteries, they may need to be charged. Um, they may modify your current voice or they may have some um, voice output, so something that you might put on your phone. So let's break down, let's talk about some voice amplifiers right now. This is a brand that we've had really good luck with. It's available on Amazon. Um, I think the last time I looked on Amazon, it was about $31. Um, so again, not free, but still kind of a reasonable price. I think it's pretty low risk to purchase. Give it a try, see if you like it. If you hate it, return it. Um, and now Amazon returns are so easy because you can take them to like any Kohl's, I think will take any Amazon return. So voice amplifier is just a system where you have a speaker that can either strap onto your waist or it could sit on a table. And then a microphone headset right here. So I really like the headsets that come close to your mouth. That way, regarding um, any sort of positional change or movement of your head, the microphone is going to follow your mouth. So it doesn't require a lot of um, repositioning or adjusting compared to other microphones that may go around your neck or clip on to like a lapel. 
and these do just what they say they're going to do. They're going to amplify your voice. So if you're noticing any changes in your voice, maybe your voice is getting a little bit weaker, or maybe you're noticing you're fatiguing a little bit more as the day goes on, or there's certain instances, like when I go to Starbucks to um, order my latte, the background noise of the Starbucks, they just can't hear me. Or when I'm on the phone, because the phone naturally will distort our voice, um, maybe that's a harder situation. Using the voice amplifier and putting your phone on speakerphone um, can be really beneficial. Um, if you're ordering, like I said, um, out in public where there's just a lot of background noise, maybe there's a coffee maker, um, just natural music playing on in the background, conversations going on in the background. This is gonna help you get over that hump um, and not having to strain or feel like you're yelling to get your voice out. Um, iPhone, iPad, Android phones, and tablet apps. Okay, so um, over here you'll see some icons of some um, pretty popular voice output apps that I have used with a variety of different patients. So Speech Assistant is one option. You'll see that it's um, one of the reasons why I like it is it's both available on Android and Apple platforms. And you can, it has a mobile version, so you can download it to your phone, but also a tablet version. So it can be downloaded to a tablet. This is just a voice output app that has a keyboard, so you can type novel messages, but it also comes with some pre-stored messages that are really easy to edit and personalize. It's very user-friendly. It's one that um, I have had a lot of positive feedback with, with my patients. Um, another app that's available for both um, Android and Apple and phone and tablet is called Predictable. You'll notice it's a bit more expensive. So now we're jumping up in price. I think it's 160 for Apple users, 175 for Android users. You may remember I previously mentioned voice banking. So if you voice bank through Model Talker or Acapella, those voices can be downloaded to this app called Predictable. So instead of having to use just the regular generated run-of-the-mill voices, if you decide to met a voice bank, sorry, see, even speech therapists use them interchangeably um, or incorrectly. Um, if you voice bank through those two parties, they can be available for download on this platform. There's also several free text-to-speech apps that are available for phone and tablet, iPad, or I'm sorry, Apple and Android. And then there are some that are just available for iPads like Grid 3, um, Toby Dynavox Snap Core First. You can do a free 60-day trial. This is only for iPads or window run computers. So I would definitely, definitely, this is not an exhaustive list. If you want to learn more, I would definitely recommend reaching out to a speech therapist so you could actually trial these apps before you actually purchase them. Um, instead of just going out and downloading a bunch of apps, these can get, you can see, expensive very quickly. Grid 3 um, is a one-time fee of $400. Before you spend that money, Go see a speech therapist that has that app that you can trial it first and see if it's even worth um, downloading. Other things to consider if you're going to use your iPhone or your iPad, I'm sorry, can you tell I'm an Apple product user? I'm, I apologize. I don't mean to be promoting just Apple and iPads. Janet's an Android user. She's going to be kicking me under the table right now. <laughs> um, so I apologize. If you are a smartphone user or a tablet user and you want to use that to communicate, um, know that there's going to be some limitations. So we can only get the volume to go as high as the device is programmed to. That may not work if you're going to use it outside or at a restaurant or um, in a louder environment. So consider purchasing a Bluetooth speaker. This is a brand that we've used, the JBL Clip. They come, um, I think this one pictured here is about less than a pound. 
Um, they come in even smaller forms now though. Um, and this will help you get over any of that background noise or background hump. And then you can also consider if you still have pretty good use of your hands and you're a pretty good typer. So I've had several patients come in that um, professionally they were used to using a regular computer. So they were pretty fast typer. Connecting your phone or your tablet to a Bluetooth um, keyboard because you may find it's a lot easier to type your message versus kind of the hunting and pecking that smartphone keyboards and tablet keyboards were kind of used for. They're not necessarily designed for our traditional typing, so you may find it's a little bit easier or faster or more efficient to type with a Bluetooth keyboard. So let's quickly review. Um, Mid-tech options, voice amplifiers can be a great, great resource for your toolbox. If you're noticing um, a weakness in voice or fatigue when you're talking, um, there are a ton of voice output apps that can be used for either a phone or a tablet. Please, again, I would say please, please, please try before you buy because these can get very expensive very quickly. And then remember that you can always connect your phone or your tablet to a Bluetooth speaker or keyboard, excuse me, to make them a little bit more efficient in different environments, um, in different settings for you. Okay, I am going to kick it off to Janet, who's going to talk about access to phone and tablet. Hi, great to be here today. So I'm going to start off to, um, talking about making using your phone and tablet much easier. We're going to include different ways to mount it, talk about styluses and the variety of them, um, connecting the devices to a mouse or a trackball, voice recognition, as well as smart speakers. So this is my favorite um, phone stand. Um, part of it's the price, it's only $9 on Amazon. And it's got two hinges here um, that allow you to bend the phone all the way down to the table. So no matter how hard you push on it, it won't tip over. So for $9, that's a really good um, deal. And it's amazing how much easier it is to put the phone down and not hold on to it, trying to hold it in one hand and texting um, or even using both hands. Our posture kind of suffers for that. So you'll notice if you put the phone down, you can have more upright posture and it's just a lot easier. And then if, you want to attach it to a table or maybe to a wheelchair or to a bed. Some other options are using modular hose. There's different kinds of clamps. So there's a spring clamp that works well on flat surfaces. Um, then you can look at um, one that works from the same company, modularhose.com, that has one for round tubing. And then RAM makes a different piece that you can pop the phone in here, but you have to like screw it down on the side. Or over here, you just spread the two arms and the phone pops right in there and it doesn't fall off. It really holds it well. So modular hose is good if you want some flexibility. You can take your hand and push it away or pull it closer to you. This mogul arm is more rigid and you can't push it away unless you move these link pieces. And then on a power chair, you can do a really nice looking low profile mount by attaching it to the track underneath the armrest. And you can have a low profile or you can actually install some of this mod hose to this piece and make it as tall or short as you want. So there's lots of options there. Um, for tablets, such as in your iPad or an Android tablet like a Samsung, you can look at RJ Cooper who sells like a camera type mount that'll attach right to round tubing or to a, again to a table or to a bed. And when you loosen this knob, all the joints become loose and you can adjust them like 360 degrees. Um, 
that is about three hundred dollars or three fifty now. And then the mod hose mount works well for a smaller tablet, maybe like the eight inch. But when you get up to the standard size 10 inch iPad or 10 inch Samsung, that tends to fall. The mod hose doesn't hold it as well. And but you can buy like copper tubing that like refrigerator tubing that you can put inside and make it more rigid. And then Beyond Adaptive makes a nice one too, similar to the RJ Cooper. Um, some more, much more rigid mounts, um, Daisy and Readapt make a lot of different options. This is the standard folding mount that Daisy makes and it's one inch rigid tubing, but you can get it for tablets in a half inch size. And then Readapt, this is their half inch size tubing that they make for um, a tablet. And it just attaches to the seat frame so you can attach it in a way that you can like lift it up and swing it out of the way or if you're able to manipulate that lever you can actually just fold it down and it can stay on the side of the chair and then you can lift it out and take the whole thing off and just a base stays on the bottom of the chair so those are options too um, sometimes just using a stylus on your phone or tablet makes it's so much easier. Um, if it's hard to extend your index finger, you might think about like a rigid finger sock like this called the Shape Daddy Finger Sock on Amazon. And it makes that finger a little bit longer, so it's a little bit easier to type with that. Um, they make packages for, of like 10 gaming finger socks for like $8 on Amazon. And it just makes your fingertip more conductive it might help if you have a fingernail that you don't um, trim like every other day. Um, that can make it a lot easier. Um, a pen stylus is a little bit longer than your standard stylus, and that might make it easier. Then this is the Reach Stylus. It's more expensive. It's seven inches, $24, but it works at a shallow angle, so you don't have to like hit things at like a 90 degree angle as well as if it's hard to hold on to the stylus and you need a utensil cuff like this either one of these notice that like when you put it like if you put the stylus in here like the fork your finger or your hand is no longer touching that stylus so your stylus loses the conductivity and then you can use this reach stylus because it's more expensive, the con con it's still conductive in a utensil cuff. And if you don't want to spend that money, you can use one of these dollar standard styluses. Um, and I'm just showing it built up. So if it's hard to grip, you can add like a spongy foam to make it bigger. But then again, your hand's not touching it to make it conductive. So I just take like copper jewelry wire and wrap it around all the way down to the tip and now my hand is on there and making it i'm touching the wire and that makes it conductive so you can either add copper wiring to a just a cheap inexpensive stylus or pay 24 dollars and you don't need that copper wire so just a couple couple different options um, so if you're going to put a regular stylus in a utensil cuff you would want to wrap that copper wire like around this whole part right here so it touches the palm of your hand um, you can also attach a standard mouse or a trackball to your tablet or to your phone. And this allows you the idea of a trackball, it's kind of an upside down mouse. You can set that trackball right on your lap and then you don't have to hold your arm up, which might be tiring or fatiguing. And then you just need like an $8 adapter cable to plug a USB into the charging port of your phone or tablet. Um, and you can get those adapter cables on Amazon again for like eight dollars. So you can get it to go from a USB mouse to either the lightning port or the C adapter port on your tablet, where, wherever you plug the charger into. And then you can actually just Google settings on your tablet to find these, but you can adjust your mouse speed. And by slowing the speed down, you might have a lot more control on it or if it's hard to reach with a mouse, 
And the same concept on a computer. If it's hard to reach everything, you might want to speed up the mouse. And then if it's hard to hit the mouse buttons to do right click, left click, there is something called dwell. So you just move the mouse and put it over an icon. And then by waiting one second, it does an automatic click. So that dwell is built into your smartphone, whether it's Android or iOS, and it's built into your tablet, whether it's Android or iOS. Um, assistive touch button can also be really helpful. If it's hard to hit the home button on your, your um, Apple phone or the home button on your Android phone, there's something called assistive touch you can turn on. Now you've got a floating button that you can move around anywhere on your screen. And after like two seconds of not touching it, it fades away. But you can like move it up here or anywhere to, to get it out of the way of your application. So when you hit that home button, your floating assistive tech touch button, it opens up and now if you touch this button again, that it'll go back to your home screen. If you touch this one that says controls, it'll open up and you can do volume up, volume down, as well as other controls. If using two and three finger gestures is difficult, you can hit the gestures star it opens it up and you can do two and three finger gestures there with one finger, or you can make custom gestures as well. Or right here, it shows that you can hit the Siri button and use voice control. So that's called assistive touch and it's in your settings under accessibility and then under touch. Think about also making shortcuts because now this is built in on your phones without having to get special apps. So like on the iPhone, I think starting with iOS 12 and up, you can make shortcuts. So you could take everything off your home screen and make a shortcut to call your favorite people. So you just have to hit these icons. And now there's also a way to make with the latest iOS, you can make them even bigger. So you'd have a larger icon. You can make it like as big as half the screen. And then on an Android phone, I used Action Blocks app, and you don't need that app on all phones now. But with Action Blocks, I made this icon. So if I touch this icon, that's like a fourth of my screen, I would be calling myself. If I touch this icon, then I would be playing Akira Knightley's song off of YouTube. And if you want to do hands-free totally on your phone and this is really nice if you're sitting back in your chair and you left your phone across the room you could and the phone rings um you could use something called voice control to actually answer it or you when the phone stops ringing you could say if it's an iphone you could say hey siri who just called me call them back if you want to talk to them if it's an Android, you could use Google Assistant and say, hey, Google, who just called me? Yes, you can call them back. Um, so with your Siri Assistant, it can be totally hands-free if you turn on the Hey Siri setting, or you can hold that home button down to bring up Siri. Um, or And then with Google Assistant, you can go into Google and turn it on so you can use it from your home screen or from a Blank, the, the black screen where it's timed out. It's just a black screen. You could say, okay, Google, it'll wake it up and say, send a text to Janet. Read me my last text from Anne Marie or hey Siri, call mom. Um, if you want to do more than what Siri and Google Assistant can do once you open an app, like if you were playing a game or like on your email, they can like, if you say, read my email from Anne Marie, it can do that, but it can't like just go down and read all your emails out loud. If you wanna do that, there's something called voice control in iOS and it's called voice access on an Android. That would allow you complete voice control of your phone or your tablet. You can say things like show numbers and every link on the page would have a number next to it and you would just say the number next to it where you wanna go. So say tap one, or just say one, and that link opens. 
you can then there's like a hundred different commands if you want to learn those so i could say like go to home it'll take me to my home screen um, then think about smart speakers the prices really come down you can get like an echo dot for thirty dollars or google home for forty or fifty dollars and that gives you even more control with using your phone or just these speakers by themselves. So it can control music, lights, the temperature. You can say, hey, Google, turn up the temperature. Hey, Google, play some country music or play my Spotify playlist, play my Pandora playlist. Um, you can make phone calls to other people that have that app downloaded. So if Anne Marie has Alexa app on her phone, I can I can use my Echo Dot and say, hey, Alexa, call Anne Marie. You can ask it questions, you can find out restaurants. So for a not there for a, a low price, you can do a lot of things with it. Okay, so just in review, uh, remember that you can use a tabletop stand or some type of a wheelchair mount to put that phone down. Don't try to hold it and type at the same time. And if typing is difficult on your phone or tablet, consider using Hey Siri or Hey Google, which is your Google Assistant on Android. Think about maybe attaching a trackball and putting that on your lap or plugging in a smart speaker to place a phone call with your voice. Okay, so Anne Marie is gonna talk about high-tech options now. Awesome, thank you so much. Janet, that was, She's so smart. Um, I always feel like I learn something new um, when I am working with her. And I'm not just saying that because she's also my boss. Um, okay, part four, let's jump in. High tech options, alternative access. So this is not, I wanna stress again, not a comprehensive list. This is just a short list of different brands that we've used before. Um, I might be getting ahead of myself here. So let's back up. Um, a speech generating device or an SGD, you may hear it called, or you may, um, insurance sometimes refers to it as this. It's basically just a computer that provides you with a language system that allows fast and efficient means to communicate with other conversational partners. Um, these are more high tech, obviously, they require charging, they require batteries, and as I guess maybe I didn't emphasize before, low-tech strategies not really covered by insurance. Those tend to be something that a speech therapist or maybe you create on your own. Mid-tech are going to be more kind of nominal fees. They're not going to be covered by insurance. Um, these high-tech devices now, these are going to range from I mean, an eye gaze device could be with mounting could be upwards of $20,000. We want insurance to buy these, right? This is why we have insurance, right? So these are gonna be a lot more expensive. Um, they are considered a dedicated device. They are a piece of medical equipment um, and they are covered by insurance. Um, several different device companies out here. So I'll walk you through. Um, this one right here is by a company called Pranky Romic Company or PRC. This is one of their eye gaze devices called an Accent. The computer is right here at the bottom. To be Dynavox is a pretty popular brand. You may have heard of them before. Um, this is one of their um, options. This is called an part of their i series an i13. Um, and then down here is a control bionics grid pad. Um, cannot stress this enough. Um, just because you may have heard that somebody has a Toby Dynavox or somebody has an accent doesn't mean that it's going to be the right fit for you. So please, please, please have an open mind if you qualify or you're interested in one of these more high tech devices. I cannot stress enough the importance of actually physically trying these devices because you may notice that oh I really thought I needed a Toby I actually don't really like the language system or I really thought I wanted to work with control ionics um but gosh darn it my eyes didn't really work as well um with that device um 
and trying something else, maybe that's going to work a lot better for you as an individual. Okay, um, I'm going to throw it back over to Janet, who's going to talk a little bit more about how are you gonna use these devices? Okay, so I'm gonna talk about uh, accessibility features on Windows and Mac, um, using smaller or larger keyboards, mouse, mice and trackballs, head mouse, eye gaze, and voice recognition. So first, there is these three wonderful things in your computer right now you might not have known about. So in, this shows you a Windows, and it's called ease of access in your settings. And if you go to that and just look at where it says keyboard. So let's say you have difficulty with typing. You would go to keyboard and then you can see features that are called things like bounce keys, slow keys, repeat keys. And if you keep going down, it'll say sticky keys. And if you turn sticky keys on, that allows you to hold two and three keys down at one time by hitting them one at a time. So you could be using a typing stick or typing with one finger and hit one key at a time. So let's say you wanna reboot your computer and hold the control alt delete buttons down. You just hit one at a time. And when you hit the last one, the delete, it releases all three buttons. So it's a really nice feature. And then it's called um, accessibility features on Mac OS. And it's the exact same thing. Or let's say you want to bring up um, an on-screen keyboard, um, you would go to the same place there, or you can look at mouse to adjust the mouse, high contrast. There's a lot of different features there. Um, so if using your mouse is difficult or holding it and doing mouse clicking, there's other options. So I love using a trackball all the time because it, first of all, it does you don't need as much desk space because it doesn't move. You keep it in one position, so you don't need any extra space. And then you can actually move that ball. The Kensington trackball is one of the larger ones and you can use your palm. You don't need your fingers to move it. You can just put your palm on it or a typing stick to move it. If you buy, uh, if you, sorry, the software is free. If you download the software, you can program in what each of the buttons would do. So you could do your left click, right click. This could be a drag. So you, if you wanna drag an icon, you can just push the button, let go, move the ball and come back and release it when you're done dragging. So you don't have to hold a button and move the ball at the same time. Um, the Logitech is a little bit smaller. It doesn't have the programmable buttons, but you've got your left and right, and it's a little bit smaller. So they come in, trackballs come in all shapes and sizes. Then if you wanna try a joystick, this is the JPad Bluetooth joystick. Um, the Kensington also comes in Bluetooth or wireless. So that's kind of nice to get rid of cords. So you can do a joystick and then there's a head mouse. So this gets plugged in right into the same USB, USB port that your mouse would be, except now you are using your head to move the mouse cursor on the screen. And all you have to wear is a tiny dot on your uh, glasses or like on your forehead. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, so Katie is showing us on a Toby i13 device. So this is um, an older model of the camera. This is a head mouse just plugged into the USB port. Katie's got a dot on her forehead that you can't see. And now you'll see her using moving her head to move the cursor on the screen. And so she has to stop and dwell. So she's not hitting any left and right click buttons. She has to stop and dwell for one second. You can adjust that dwell time. So she's typing her message in Communicator 5 software. Um, and if any of you noticed her head right away there, you'll notice that she didn't have to move it very much. Um, and now she's gonna be using dwell on the desktop. So this would be like on any Windows computer. You can plug a head mouse in on any computer, Mac OS or Windows. 
So this is dwell click software. So she just picked the double click icon. Now she can double click and open Google Chrome. It result, reverts back to single click and she just clicked in her Google search box. And now she brings up the on-screen keyboard. She's having a little trouble stopping on that small icon. So she, what she might wanna do is like enlarge that toolbar so it's a little bit bigger or we'll work on her control. Okay, so that's a head mouse. And now I'm gonna show you what eye gaze is like. With eye gaze, you actually wanna think about keeping your head still. So you wanna get really comfortable in your favorite chair where your whole body feels stable and, and think about keeping your head still and only moving your eyes. So Ed is showing us eye gaze on the same device in I-13, communicator five, whoops. And you'll see the cursor. So he's got a red circle. He has to wait till the red circle fills in to make that selection. So he's typing with eye movement. The eye gaze camera built into that reflects off his pupils. It's an infrared light that reflects off the pupils. And he's not moving his... So he's telling me he wants to go home and celebrate his son's birthday and not do any more, any more videos for me. Okay, so that's what eye gaze would be like. You can even get a separate camera and plug it into any computer. There's like five different vendors right now that make eye gaze cameras. So they all work a little bit differently and it's good to try them all out. And last, I wanna talk about voice recognition. Um, so there's free voice recognition that you might've tried already in your phone or tablet um, on a computer. A Chromebook has built-in speech. Um, Windows has built-in speech and your Mac OS has built-in that's free, that's just there. Um, and it works really well if someone has intelligible speech, um, but it doesn't do any long-term learning. So it doesn't learn your speech patterns. The accuracy doesn't improve with time. So kind of the first time you try it, that's what you're gonna get. Um, if you have very intelligible speech, that might work really well for you and it, you might not need anything else. Um, if you are on a Windows computer, then there's Dragon Naturally Speaking, which is the best program, but it only works on a Windows computer. It won't work on a Chromebook, it doesn't work on a Mac, but it learns your speech. So it can work with um, a certain degree of dysarthria. Um, uh, if you have dysarthria, where your voice is difficult for other people to understand sometimes. It might take more training um, and you might have to do more corrections, but it might work. Um, so it really depends on how much dysarthria there is. It might be something you just wanna try and don't go and buy it. It can get, it varies from $200 for one version to $500 for another version. Um, but with Dragon, you can have totally hands-free use of your computer. So just to review that really quick, um, speech generating devices are not one size fits all. Amory, did you wanna say anything else about uh, that? No, I think um, the only thing if I, if I could, I would say that um, really, really physically try out multiple devices to decide which one is going to work best for you. Um, I would say an evaluation with an occupational therapist and a speech therapist would be amazing just because the speech therapist can help you decide what vocabulary you want in the language system and your our OT counterpart can help you decide what's gonna be the best way for you to use the actual device. Is it going to be a head mouse? Is it gonna be eye gaze? Um, we can walk you through the funding process. We can help with the funding process, like any paperwork or reports that need to go to insurance in order to get the device funded. Um, so please don't feel like this has to be something that you do on your own. Um, and also recognize too that it's not gonna be a fast process, right? Especially if we know that insurance is involved. So even if you're thinking like, gosh, I don't know if I'm ready for that, maybe it's worth getting an evaluation to just see what's out there 
and maybe even just start the funding process, knowing that it may take a month or two or sometimes longer to actually get the equipment that um, you may need further down the road. Okay, and just remember to try multiple access options to compare. You know, you might want to try head mouse and eye gaze and see how they're different. Uh, try the built-in speech on your laptop or Dragon Naturally Speaking, but remember that's Windows only. Um, there's some additional resources that Anne Marie put together here. Um, yeah, oh, talk about sure, that sure. I can jump in real, really, really fast. So Nicole did a phenomenal job explaining um, all the different things that are available through you through Les Turner. It's a wonderful um, program, um, nonprofit that can provide a ton of support. But there's also stuff other um, nonprofits out there. So one that I'll hi highlight. Um, quickly is I am ALS. This was created by Brian Wallach and his wife. Brian is a person who's currently living with ALS. Um, their whole mission is to serve and provide education. So if you have a question about different medications or treatments or um, how to travel with ALS, um, or you want to be an advocate, like what is Congress doing? Um, Brian has a background, I think, in political science, if I'm not mistaken, um, and he and his wife worked for the Obama campaign. So they have been very, very active in getting support through um, federal grants, funding, and Congress. Um, there's also ALSA, the ALSA Association. Um, they're working to discover treatments and a cure for ALS, and then advocate and empower people who are living with ALS. Um, they can also be utilized for support groups, um, maybe even loaner equipment, um, Les Turner, we can't emphasize enough. Thank you, Nicole, and everyone at Les Turner for everything that you guys do for our patients. And then you've heard me also talk about Team Gleason, um, which was created by Steve Gleason, a person currently living with ALS. And their whole mission is to make sure that people living with ALS have the equipment and the technology that they need. So you may have met may have heard me mention before, they'll cover the cost of the voice banking process for you. They'll loan out equipment for you to complete the voice banking process. Um, they're even going so far as helping cover co-pays if your insurance won't cover your equipment in full. Um, so they want to take that financial um, burden off of people living with ALS. Okay, so how did we do on time? We did great. Not too bad. <laughs> you guys did a beautiful job beautiful job can you hear me okay Janet and Anne Marie yep. okay, yes good. you know it's it's just so interesting because I always try to sum up the real goal and the real meaning of these webinars at the end and it's just so so beautifully presented um, to be able to allow the individuals we serve in the ALS community to express their personalities through these tools. And I mean, that's just so important. And I know, Anne-Marie, you mentioned that your voice is a part of your personality. And we want people to feel like they can express themselves, you know, in a way that's meaningful for them and remain as independent as possible for as long as possible. And so that was just beautifully presented. Thank you so much. Um, so, we are gonna continue on with the closing of our webinar, but I can't thank Janet and Anne Marie enough. It's so wonderful to partner with you and Shirley Ryan Ability Lab. Thank you so much. And we hope we can work with you again soon. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. <laughs> were Take there, care. Um, oh, were there any questions that people had? Oh, oh my gosh. I apologize. That's <laughs> my fault. That's my fault. No, Let it's okay. This up. My apologies. Okay, we're gonna do Q and A right now, and um, we'll be pulling that screen. I'm gonna gonna have uh, my uh, support in the background pull up the uh, Q and A slide. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so I just sent an I just sent a, a message out to everyone. I hope everyone can see it. It says this is where you can ask questions to the presenters for them to answer. So please use that box there. It says type message here, hit send, and we will look for your questions. In the meantime, as we're waiting, 
Um, I know that we talked yesterday, uh, Janet and I and, and Anne Marie, we talked yesterday about some of the common questions that they receive. So uh, the first one was, let me pull this up on my end, is my voice good enough to voice bank? So how would you answer that? Yeah, that's a great question and you're right. Um, it is something that we get a lot. And I would say, you know, it's really gonna be dependent on the patient. It's something that I would never tell somebody that their voice isn't strong enough to voice bank. It's really something about, um, do you have enough energy to voice bank? Um, like I had previously mentioned before, um, Model Talker at one time required like 1,500 messages. That can be a huge undertaking. Um, there is a newer company, or at least newer to me, called Speak Unique, where they don't necessarily require a number of recordings, but maybe you feel like, shoot, I don't like the way that my voice sounds, but I have a couple voicemails that I left some loved ones. Oh. If we have enough connected speech, in theory, what we could do is send those voicemails to Speak Unique, and I think they need, at a minimum, they'll say five minutes of connected speech, and it doesn't have to be one file. It could be over the course of several different files, um, but they've made a voice with, I think, around one minute of speech. So wow. it kind of all depends. So we've had, you know, professors who are like, well, I have a bunch of my lectures recorded. I don't like the way my voice sounds right now, but could we use these to make a voice? Wow. So it all kind of depends on your resources and where you are kind of in, in like physically, like physically, how does your voice sound? Do you like it? But also, I can't stress enough, this is a heavy topic, right? Yeah. Think about ahead of time of, I might lose my voice. Not everybody does, everybody's different. We talk about ifs, not when this happens, if this happens to you. So you, it's, it's a heavy topic, right? And nobody really wants to talk about losing your voice, but I would hate to not talk about it or tell somebody not to do it. And then further down the road, that person think like, gosh, I wish I would have recorded myself or what mm -hmm. if that, that's not what we're here for. Like, that's not why I became a speech therapist. So I can have a difficult discussion and kind of lay out some options for you. But ultimately, you have to think about what works best for you, what you want for you and your life, your partners, your family, your friends, things like that. Yeah, that's so powerful. It is because I'll never forget someone told me once how they felt like there was a third person in the room because of this communication device. And I think that just in and of itself just really yeah. speaks to how important this is. Um, yeah, absolutely. And then um, some people um, you, you shared with me that some people wonder if they need to get a new phone or if Android operating system is better than the Apple operating system. What would you say to that? Oh, gosh, Janet, what would we say? <laughs> I'm pro yeah. Apple now. Um, <laughs> as far as access goes, like they both can do the same thing. You can plug in mice, you can plug in trackballs, you can do switches, uh, you can use your voice on both of them. So as far as access, there's really no difference. The biggest difference is if you have a really old phone yeah. versus a newer model. The newer models are always going to do more as far as access goes. And I'll let Anne Marie talk about the apps. <laughs> Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, the apps, you know, there is, I might lean a little bit more towards Apple if you're going to use your phone or a tablet for voice output, just because there is one drawback that I found with Android. Um, so, for example, that app speech assistant where you have um, pre-stored messages, but you can also type out novel phrases. As it stands on the Apple side of things, those will allow you to make phone calls and video calls. So I can, in theory, make a phone call on my phone um, and use my own speech. But say I run into a problem where somebody's like, oh, wait, I, I, I didn't hear that or I couldn't quite catch that. I can toggle over to speech assistant, type out my message, hit speak, and the person on the other end of the phone will be able to hear me. 
It works the same way in FaceTime as well. So Apple has developed the te technology to allow voice output to embed into phone calls and video calls. For whatever reason, it's not available on Androids right now. So sometimes I will highlight Apple a little bit more, depending again though, on how you wanna use your phone yeah. and how you wanna use the app. If it's just going to be a face-to-face -face communication, I would say, um, Apple, Android, we can find the right app that works for you on your platform. But if you really want that feature of being able to embed into FaceTime calls and phone calls, that that's more of an Apple. Um, it's better served on Apple. Wait a minute. But if oh. you're getting a dedicated <laughs> communication device, oh, yes, yes, yes. Android has always had this mirror Android feature. Apple's trying to come up with it, but it's yeah. it's just not working so smooth for us yet. Yeah. So you can do an Android mirroring and see your actual phone screen on communication devices. Oh. And it just makes doing anything you want on your phone a lot easier. You can still do some stuff on the iPhone. It's just not as easy to do on. everything. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That, that is a really, really good point. And shame <laughs> on me for forgetting about that. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> You two make a great team. And I think that that leads into this last this last question is, it sounds to me like people could really benefit from, from spending some time and, you know, uh, expressing what they their needs and wants are with a speech language pathologist um, and um, someone who has the expertise like the two of you. So what if I need help with voice or message banking? <laughs> yeah, this is something that I've definitely run into. And you may have um, in passing a doctor or a therapist say, well, you know, I think you'd be a great candidate for voice thinking and message banking. But then you think like, well, how do I get started? Or how do I do that? Right? Um, so absolutely any, and I will say this kind of with a caveat, because AAC or assistive technology does get a little specialized, but in theory, any speech therapist should be able, it is well within our scope of practice to help you get through this process. It is not something um, that is easy to, to undergo or even to know where those first steps are. So I would say absolutely, a speech therapist can absolutely help guide you and show you how to do it. They may throw it back onto you. I have done that before of like, well, I can't physically go home with you and record those messages. <laughs> I can hold your hand and get you through this process so you feel confident enough to do it on your own. And then once you have those messages, absolutely, let's come on back. Let's get them into your My Toby Dynavox account. Let's save them. Let's transcribe them. Um, so absolutely have a buddy system. I am all about the buddy system here. Um, and I'm not saying that this absolutely too like has to come through Shirley Ryan, but know that we do have a technology center. Um, myself, my colleagues are all well versed. We would love to meet any of you guys and help serve you. Um, but if you're not in the Chicagoland area or that precludes you, please reach out. Team Gleason has also been wonderful with um, directing patients to therapists that have done voice banking or message banking before. So even if you're outside um, the Chicagoland area or maybe in a, a place where you don't have as much resources, don't hesitate to reach out because we can certainly help connect you to where you um, may be better served. Oh, perfect. That's so helpful, Anne-Marie. Thank you. And I know yeah. that uh, I like, I always get questions after these webinars. Well, we have none in the chat box right now that I can see. Um, I will forward you any additional questions that I get so that you can answer those. But um, did you want to say something else, Janet, before we no, conclude? No, that's great. Okay. no, we'll be glad to answer them. Yeah. Thank you so much. And again, now I can officially thank you again for this partnership. We really yeah. appreciate it. And um, I will keep you posted if we get any additional questions. But thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank you everyone. Everyone. Bye, bye bye. Okay, everyone. 
Thank you for your patience as we transition from the Q&A. I wanted to invite everyone to join us next month for family planning and ALS. Uh, we will be talking about reproductive genetics with Lisa Kinsley on Thursday, October 7th at 12 o'clock Central, Central Standard Time. And then I would then invite you again to uh, join us for the upcoming webinar in November, November 11th at 12 o'clock as well. Uh, to discuss hospice and palliative care for people with ALS with Dr. Martha Twaddle. And another invitation, because we have a lot of great information to offer you. Uh, our, our annual symposium will be happening on November 1st. We'll feature presentations from leading ALS clinicians and researchers, including members of our Lois and Salia ALS Clinic at our Les Turner ALS Center at Northwestern Medicine. Know that Dr. Brown will be um, will be there uh, as a long-standing. He has a very a long-standing research interest in identifying gene defects that underlie ALS and related neuromuscular disorders. His laboratory team has used insights from these investigations in genetics to generate cell and animal models of each of these disorders. And most recently, he has initiated tri trials of gene suppression therapy, SOD1 and C9 or 72 in non-human primate, primates and now in humans. He has published more than 300 peer review reports and more than 70 reviews and chapters on these topics. So in conclusion, I wanted to uh, give a special thank you to Anne-Marie and Janet for sharing their knowledge and expertise with us today. But most importantly, thank you all for joining us. If you would take a few minutes to fill out the survey that you will get immediately after the conclusion of the webinar, we would truly appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you.